Greetings, West Croydon Baptist Church. A lot has happened since the church building has been closed. We've been doing a lot of communicating by email, telephoning. There's been prayer by telephone conference and um, videos online. And I've been asked to address you this morning. And I've chosen a particular theme. It's a funny thing, but we don't often talk about heaven. And this is rather curious, since if we are in Christ, heaven is really the whole point of what it's all about. It's our final destination. And more than that, it's our home. When I was a boy, uh, I went to a prep school from 8 till 12, and um, as we came towards the end of the term, this was a boarding school, there was one thing that we were all thinking about, singing about, dreaming about, and that was going home for the halls, getting on that school train to go home. Do we ever think in that way about going to heaven at the end of our lives? There was a Christian man once and somebody asked him, how do you know you're going to heaven? And he replied, Madam, I live there. We read in Philippians 3, 20 to 21, but our citizenship is in heaven and we eagerly await a saviour from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who, by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. And during this time of self-isolation, we have a unique opportunity to reflect on the things that really matter and, among other things, to follow the exhortation of Paul in Colossians 3.2 when he says, Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. When we do this, everything falls into place. Imagine you want to go on a train to Edinburgh. You really want to get to Edinburgh. You've got your friends there, perhaps you've got family, things to do, and Edinburgh is where you're going. So you get on your train in uh, King's Cross and it sets off. And you sit back and you say, ah, the whole journey to Edinburgh, because I really like trains, is in front of me. I'm really looking forward to this journey of going to Edinburgh. So you get to first stop Peterborough. Ah, still got most of the journey is in front of me. Next stop, York. Oh dear, we're halfway there. Oh well, still got the other half to enjoy. Next stop, Darlington. Oh, for the good old days, if any of we could get to the, back to the good old days when we were in Peterborough. Next stop, Newcastle. Uh, not much left now, is there? Better make the most of it. Final stop, Berwick-on-Tweed. Oh no, the end is nigh. But something's gone wrong here. If that's really your attitude, it does raise the question of whether you really wanted to go to Edinburgh in the first place. The person who travels in this way um, has muddled the journey there with the point of what the journey is all about. Yet, as Christians, isn't that exactly how so many of us live our lives? We agree, in theory, that heaven is where we go at the end of our lives. But what does this really mean in our hearts? We need to live each day with heaven in our heart. Now, this doesn't mean that we don't care about our neighbour, that we don't care about leading people to Christ, bringing up our children, and all the things that we should be doing and focused on in our lives. On the contrary, it spurs us on to an ever closer walk with Jesus and carrying out his will for our lives. Jesus said, Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven 
and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. A non-believer living without faith in Christ will see this world as all that there is. Now in that situation, for him, life is a depreciating asset. But if we are in Christ, life is not a depreciating asset. It is an appreciating asset and gets more precious as we draw near to our final objective. So, what will heaven be like? Well, Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 2, 9 to 10, as it is written, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. In other words, heaven is going to be beyond our wildest dreams. It's so wonderful that our mortal minds cannot grasp it on this earth. Can you imagine living with God forever? Because that's, that's what we'll be doing. Living without sin. All those struggles against sin over forever. We'll never have to go back to all, all that again. Let us now look at what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 5 verses 50 to 57. I declare to you, brothers, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable, and mortal, the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true, death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, he gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. A wonderful thing about all this is that we will not be ghosts or marks on the wall. We will have resurrection bodies just like Christ, with the qualities that his resurrection body was clearly demonstrated after he'd risen from, from the dead. And we will be like him also in our character. We will not be less real or less substantial than we are on earth. On the contrary, we will be infinitely more real and more substantial than we ever were on earth. So now in the light of all this, how should we live our lives in this world? Well, Peter um, has some words to say about this because of course if our homes if our home is in heaven it means that we are aliens in this world this world that we are temporarily passing through and he writes in 1 peter 2 11 to 12 dear friends i urge you as aliens and strangers in the world to abstain from sinful desires that war against your soul Live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. I'm sure many of you are familiar with the Narnia stories of C.S. Lewis. Some of you have seen the films. Many of you have had the stories. There were seven books altogether read to you as children. I certainly read them to all my children. And some of you have read them to your children, or some of you have just read them to yourselves. Now, I want to end this talk by reading the closing lines of the final book of the series called The Last Battle. In the story, as we come to the end, the Pevensey children have all been killed 
in a train crash and they had just arrived in heaven. So that their lives on earth and all the time they had in Narnia are all over. Now listen to these last closing lines. Their life in this world and all their adventures in Narnia had only been the cover and the title page. Now at last they were beginning chapter one of the great story which no one on earth has read, which goes on forever and ever, in which every chapter is better than the one before. Thank you for listening. God bless you all. Have a wonderful Sunday.